Hi guys, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, so why am I shooting this video? Well, if any of you guys have seen my uh, post storm cleanup video, you may have noticed that the light level as I changed some of the angles for shooting um, got real bright, got real dim. You know, it was kind of like you're just staring into shadows during a, a fair portion of what I was cutting. Um, I am not tech savvy by any stretch of the imagination. That's just not my thing. I like sticks, steel, uh, guns on the rocks. That's just kind of my thing. I, I have a very difficult time with technology. Um, this GoPro for one gives me a, a, a fit quite often. Even cell phones, computers, it's just not my thing. My brother, he's an IT guy, he's self-taught. He can do, well, I refer to him usually whenever I have questions. Um, and kind of the same thing with, you know, for me, you know, mechanically speaking, if he's got questions about like guns or whatever, I'm the man. So I've been uh, watching different videos uh, on how to better use the GoPro, I have a GoPro Hero 8 Black. Um, I've had it for a couple years uh, until I started this channel. I didn't really use it much. Um, so I've been trying to figure out how to get better image quality and get rid of that, that light shift that, uh, that caused um, that video to be uh, very dark in portions of it. And... Uh, I'm also working on hafting a another splitting mall, uh, more like one of the hybrid type axes, similar to the uh, uh, spalt axe or the prandy. Um, in one of the other videos where I uh, was using my grinder, you guys saw me clean this up, and these are similar designs. Um, a, uh, another YouTuber, and I won't mention his name because he hasn't uh, put out anything on his channel yet, but we were, were working on, on a collaboration where we're going to use some of these. Um, so that's that's his idea. I'm not going to do a spoiler alert or give a spoiler, but I did pick up a few... box store handles and I need to get these uh, put up. Um, you might be wondering why would I go with box store handles when I've got a bunch of Killinger handles. Um, as some of you guys may see Killinger is getting out of the handle business and I really want to save those handles for when I'm better um, as well as uh, some of the nicer uh, vintage axe heads that I have. These things, they're, they're no name, lesser quality, and the whole idea is just to smash them to see what head design works better. So I don't really care about these handles. However, I did uh, manage to find two that has very straight grain. Uh, this one in particular has very tight grain. Uh, this one that's in the vise here um, is also as straight. It's not as tight, but both of them were surprisingly nice. So I decided these will work fine for what I want to do. So I've already fitted the head. I just have to put it back on. Still going to do some scraping on here to get this lacquer off. And more or less testing the... Uh, I just lost my mind. Testing the uh, settings that I changed on the uh, GoPro. So I hope you guys enjoy. Worst case scenario, if none of this audio came through and it's not working right, I can always trash it, right? Let me unplug this because I don't know if that's affecting the mic. Alright, hopefully the mic's working now. If it didn't before.
Surprisingly, when I was working on this the other day, it took me like 45 minutes to get it fitted, which was amazingly fast, considering the, uh, this is the first full size that I've ever tried hafting. Um, you know, I'm a novice. You guys saw me do the, uh, um, the small hatchet with the Kellinger handle. That was actually my first attempt ever at hafting a, uh, any kind of head. I'm just cleaning the shoulder up real quick before I take off the rest of this lacquer. And again, I am using the Rockwell Jaw Horse. Still love this thing. If you guys have not checked out a Rockwell Jaw Horse before, they are fantastic. Um, I've got a video. That I posted uh, a while back uh, on it. Um, they, if I memory serves me, they run about 200 bucks. But I tell you what, for someone that doesn't have room for a vice or, or a workbench or anything like that, this thing is awesome. Those of you that are new to hafting or new to my channel, this is a card scraper. Uh, works very well for removing um, lacquer off of these handles uh, so that you can um, <clears throat> oil them. Although I'm kind of looking in the wrong direction for seeing what I'm doing because the reflection from the uh, sunlight really helps a lot. But it's real simple. I mean, it's it's a plate of steel with with a sharp edge. You put a little bit of pressure behind it, and you can you can take a lot off. That right there is a little bit of wood, and uh, the lacquer that comes from these things from the factory. Some people like the lacquer, I'm not a fan of it. So, I used to be one of those guys, I was like, why are you doing that? Why not just take sandpaper to it? Believe it or not, this is a lot faster than taking sandpaper to it, and you can pretty much pretty well get a smoother finish out of it too. Now I don't know if the mic's picking it up, but you can actually hear a difference when I get to the wood versus just taking the lacquer off. It just sounds sounds cleaner. You can be sanding on this thing for a good while before you get off how much I just got off in just a few strokes. Now, I'm not a woodworking guy, so I've yet to figure out if there's actually a direction that they 
that they say you should go with it to get a smoother finish. I'm just always kind of going whatever direction I need to and well, it's worked out for me. Let's take a look from the other side. So, looking at it from above or from the angle, I got a little couple pieces here. I got a strip right here. Looking pretty good. Sometimes you just need the light though. You can see just doing the little bits like this, you can get you can get quite a bit off of there. these jaws are rubber padded you don't have to put the cloth in there like I do that's just my personal preference um, it keeps it from uh, warping the wood or in putting impressions in a bit Hear how much cleaner that sounds.
So this area right here, you have to go back against it because otherwise you're going to start lifting up the grain. What I'm going to do finer strokes. This is All right, so this new setting, I'm already down to 60% and I've got an hour left of record time so it's burning up more of my uh, memory card and I believe the GoPro is also pretty all right so after making a brief intermission uh, to change some equipment so I had this case and the case works pretty good. It's designed to hold a uh, GoPro block that basically allows you to use a 3.5 millimeter plug-in uh, for your audio. Um, and the case kind of just protects the uh, GoPro as well. Uh, anytime I shoot anything other than 10, ugh, can't talk 1080p. Uh, at uh, I think it's 30 frames per second I don't know, I'm not familiar with all that stuff but basically 1080p-30 um, the camera overheats uh, if I do 2700 1440p anything like that it just it heats up real fast burns through the battery so I, I don't know if everybody has that issue but uh, I talked to Taz man he's he's got a similar issue with his when he try shooting at a higher resolution so the setting I'm on right now is 4k 60 L um, I'll post the link to the video uh, that I watched for for getting these settings but uh, hopefully I can do a little bit more here and the camera doesn't overheat um, obviously these things will hold in a bit of a bit more heat uh, than just being in the open air but it's it's not a sealed cover it's just a two-piece that keeps the screen open but it does keep the heat from radiating up away from it so we have to contact some other people and figure out uh, other methods of doing attachments and whatnot and see what works for them now let's pop this out real quick Doesn't feel too hot now and a boot it's like 70 degrees in here and I've got a little bit of a breeze through the garage so it's not like it should be real real bad in here
looks pretty good to me. Maybe a spot right along there. Where's my plate? Oh, looks pretty good. So this bit right here, hope you guys can see this. This one is blank except for a very small stamp right here that says Japan. Um, when I first started looking at this, I thought it was a bad cast, bad punch on here because the eye comes all the way to here and there's actually part of the eye sticking out the front. But if you look at it this way, the way this is cast, this part comes out further than this one, so it sits differently on the um, on haft. Bit unusual. Not sure what the uh, idea is there as to why. Um, but this is the top where the wedge goes. This is the bottom, and uh, you know, I don't know if this was ever on a wooden. Uh, wooden handle or if this is a composite handle but there are some marks in there looks like it was drilled out and there's a little bit of rust on the inside so I can only assume this was on a wood handle but you guys can see I'm fit all the way up tight against there just gonna give it a couple taps and then uh, we'll cut a little bit off of that. I'll mark it and, and saw it and then uh, we'll drive our wedge in there. All right, this is not the straightest or greatest, but it's good enough for what I'm doing. Not that it's terribly important to have this straight, but... straight enough.
still not quite used to these Japanese saws yet. Maybe we'll start with the small side. This thing's pretty cheap, but uh, works good for doing the kerf cuts. I'm a little bit worried about how floppy it is. I keep feeling like I'm going to bend it right here, but it works. All right, let's seat this guy on here again. All right, so this camera is heating up again pretty good. So it might be the settings. I'll just have to figure out what I can do with it. The setting is what he called uh, set it and forget it, not the outdoor setting. There's my wedge. All right. So this handle came with wooden wedge and two metal wedges. Gentlemen, just came to the door, so I'll be right back. All right. I cut my wedge down a little bit. I'm putting Elmer's glue on it because that's what I have. Elmer's wood glue. That one works good for me. Been using it for well, my whole life. Never tried Gorilla Glue. I hear a lot of people like that one. Probably got a little bit too much on here, but... What the heck? I've already also put some in the kerf. So 
so that's seeping down in there now set that on the top there get a glove on real quick Hopefully this does the way I want it to. I'm not sure it's seated as far as I wanted it to go, but it might be that it's good enough. At least good enough for my purposes. Like I mentioned, this also comes with uh, metal wedges, and previously I've not used the metal wedges, at least not on the smaller. Smaller ones, but I think I'm going to on this one. That'll get me spread out a little bit more. Anyhow, I paid for them, so I might as well use them. Get that guy back in there. Probably can't see what I'm doing here. So, just for giggles, I'm actually going to stop this and switch to a different uh, setting. All right, now we're on the outdoor setting. I don't know that that'll make much difference, but we'll see here in a minute. Well, we'll see in a little bit. Still got about 40 minutes of uh, record time and 16% on the battery. So these settings do burn through the battery faster.
put my glove back on. For whatever reason, this likes to bind. might seem like a really awkward way of doing this and believe it or not it really is because I don't know why but this is the second bit of hung cutting this top off with this saw and always after you hang it the saw likes to bind so I don't know what the what the idea is behind that but a little less we'll try not break this top off still with me yep you're still with me all right that looks pretty okay there are a few gaps in there that we're going to try and fill here shortly Now we've got these metal wedges here, and I've never tried putting these in. So, I'm going to pick a spot and try not to smash my fingers. That's that one. We're going to do one more just because. We've got one more. Let's see if we can do this a little different. I'm down to 6%. We can make this work yet. Right there. Yeah, that'll work.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it overheated again. And after a quick battery change, yeah, don't need to see all that nonsense. After a quick battery change and hanging our proud, means there's material sticking out the top over here. We got one last step, and that is to apply a finish to the handle. Now, I could sand it down, take some of the uh, roughness out of it, but I am not doing that. This is going to be functional, not fashionable. But to completely contradict what I just said, I am putting on some Killinger snake juice. Now, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Killinger is getting out of the um handle business hopefully he still keeps manufacturing this this is great stuff the smell is unbelievable um he did tell me a few things that are in it which i'm not going to share but this stuff it smells like the outdoors. It makes me want to stand in fire, fish, sleep in a log cabin, eat meat. It has an amazing smell to it. Now it's possible I probably should have taken more off of this get some of that lacquer out that might still be in there but you can see this is already taking it in nicely Believe it or not, every time I smell this stuff, it just makes me hungry. It has that kind of smell to it. Just very outdoorsy, earthy. Makes you want to do manly things. smells just incredible and it seeps into the wood nice too in here too hopefully you guys can see that I'm out on the end here and I don't remember the exact uh, method for treating this um, I know Killinger has it on one of his videos, and uh, Wrangle Star, I believe, used the once a day for a week, uh, once a week for a month, once a month for a year, and then every year um, theory. And you know that sounds sounds alright to me. 
other side to do this. This side might be taking it up a little bit better.